you in, Faith Family, and it's always a pleasure to have you join us for our daily connection, a uh, time when we get together in the Word. More importantly, the Word gets into us. And speaking of Word, today we're looking at another prohibition, if you want to think of it like that, and what Paul gives us in Ephesians chapter 5. I'm specifically talking about verse 4 where he says, Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking, and they're not suitable, but rather give thanks. So remember, we're still dealing with the idea of being imitators of God, walking in Christ likeness. We had two positives, now we're coming back with two negatives. And of course, in verse 4, he's talking specifically about our speech. And it's funny because most of us grew up with the old saying, oh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Uh, and we realized quickly in the real world that's not true, that words can be very hurtful. Um, they can cause tremendous pain. And not just to the ones who receive them, but as we're going to see here, it can be painful for those who speak them, especially words that are unkind, words that are untrue, words that are hurtful, spiteful, on and on and on we can go. Now, it's interesting because here again, Paul gives us something of a list, uh, a very broad one if you want to consider that, with the words he's using. Uh, first of all, he says, obscene talk. Obscene talk is that which is degrading. Um, that which takes what would normally be good and wholesome and tears it down to a place where it becomes almost uh, un, you know, un, unrecognizable, if you will, because it doesn't even resemble what it should be. Um, the second one, he says, is foolish talking. You know, it's still the same idea, but the word foolish there is the word from which we get the word moron. Uh, and it's a compound word with the word legos on there, which means to speak. And so he's basically saying talk that is um, becoming of someone who, who maybe is immature, someone who has had uh, an issue to where the point where their, their mind can't uh, uh, comprehend things at a very high level, um, one who is uneducated. Uh, and of course, that's where we get our word moros, is where we get our word moron from. And so hence we have this idea of foolish talk, and it was often used to describe someone who was drunk, you know, under the influence, and what our moms might have called a potty mouth. Uh, someone who should more be more than capable of speaking to a, a much more intellectual, educated, higher level, but yet they continue to speak at very low, crass levels. And then Paul says this, or crude joking. Um, and you know, again, kind of the idea of obscene to a point, but you're taking some things that would, would normally maybe not even be referenced in public or, or some things that are wholesome and good, and, and you're, you're, you're joking about them in such a way or you're, you're using innuendos in such a way that it makes that into something that, that's not good. Paul says here, these aren't suitable. They're, they're, they're not appropriate. But in essence, what he's really saying is, is you have to be very careful with our speech. We have to be very calculated. We have to be compassion-driven. We need to be constructive in our speech, not destructive with our speech. You know, because James even says, if you want to turn there for a moment, James chapter 3, verse 6, he says this, The tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among our members. It, it stains the whole body. It sets the course of life on fire, and it, it sets on, itself set on fire by hell. And then James says this, every kind of animal, bird, reptile, fish, is tamed and has been tamed by humankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we bless our Lord, God, and Father. And with it, we curse people who are made in God's likeness. Blessing and cursing coming out of the same mouth? James says, my brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. So clearly, James is making something of a similar argument to what Paul makes for us here in Ephesians 5, noting that these should not be, they're not suitable for the one imitating God and walking in Christ's likeness. In fact, if you were to go on down in Ephesians 5, down to, I think it's verse, um, what, 20? Well, back up a little bit, verse 15. Paul says, Pay careful attention then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of the time, because days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit. Here it is. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that goes right along with what he's saying at the end of verse 4 there. Hey, but giving thanks. How we do that through the various avenues that Paul just mentioned. So one of the questions our writer asks is, when have you seen the power of your words? When have you 
you know, just given enough careful observation to how your words were received or, or how your words affected someone else. Maybe you didn't speak them directly to them. You know, this day and time, people are very bold behind the screen typing in certain things in social media avenues. But when it comes to face to face, they begin to deny they said it. Ah, da, 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 da. You know, but, but have you given careful observation to, to how your words affected someone? You know, noticing how maybe their actions changed or their attitude changed or, or did you even consider them to begin with? You just blurted something out. I mean, you know me. I've said it from the pulpit many times. My, my mouth tends to move faster than my brain sometimes. And I can tell you, over my life, especially when I was young, it got me in trouble you know, a lot. But the fact is, as a born-again child of God, it, it shouldn't matter because my motive should, must always be giving thanks to God. My motive must always be building up. My motive must always be to speak what is wholesome and good and loving and caring you know, and, and sadly, our culture almost, uh, well, no, they don't almost, they do. It, it celebrates the idea of coarse jesting or crude joking and all different things. I mean, that, that's become almost the expectation, not even just the norm, the expectation. But it shouldn't be that way among the children of God. We should be above that. You know, this idea of foolish talk should not be a part of who we are. And, and I'm going to go ahead and confess to you something I have to work hard at. Because it's easy to fall into the patterns of the world and to default to uh, speaking in ways that really don't take a lot of thought, you know, you don't have to give much careful attention to, and, and but that can't be an excuse, you know. And so I'll tell you, as far as today's verse, what's well, working on me to make sure that you know I'm, I'm surrendering to the Holy Spirit every day. I'm saturating. You know, Paul said, "Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." Romans 12:2. So that one's fresh on my mind today as well. But we all need to make that commitment, don't we, faith family? We all need to come together in a way that builds up. And as Paul said earlier, giving thanks, how? Through the singing of psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, giving praise to God, you know, not tearing down when, it, you know, that would, would be easy to do that, but seeking to build up. That's the Christ-honoring way we do that. So I'm confessing today is a very challenging verse. It's a very challenging devotion, but it's a challenge. We, we don't have any choice. We, we must accept that challenge, and we must surrender the old patterns of the old world, old, old way in the world, and we must be embraced by what the Holy Spirit is doing in renewing our minds and in transforming us into the new creation. Well, let's journey through that challenge together today, will you? I know it's close to the end of the week, and so buttons are being pushed, nerves are frayed, yada, yada, yada. But think about this. We're halfway through the year. Um, you know, we're almost done. We're halfway done with 2021. And I want you to think about it. What can I commit to do in the next half of this year? That is going to make a dynamic difference for the kingdom of God and in the life of those around me, whether it's my family, my co-workers, those in the recreation that I participate in, or our faith, your faith family. What can I do for the next half of this year? And what words can I speak that will bring glory to God, that will build up my fellow believers, and that will encourage unbelievers so that they'll know and that I will demonstrate that I have indeed been sent?